Uh, whew. I think it, every day it takes over my life, but I was definitely bitten by the bug. Around fourth or fifth grade, I was going to summer camp that year, and I was told I could buy a CD, and I bought uh, my first Dave Matthews Band CD. And I brought it to camp, and I just listened to it over and over again. And I just loved Crush and Crash Into Me, and it was, that was it. I wanted to be Dave Matthews, that was it. <laughs> so since then, it's been probably very annoying to my mom about more instruments, so long as they're not drums, and uh, more music. And she did a great job of supporting me and never told me to shush. No, I wish I could meet Dave and tell him that story, but um, he's such an incredibly talented performer, and when they tour, they're just so good. And what's amazing about Dave Matthews Band is that it's all about the music, and it's a great community. But on, on the whim that I do meet Dave, I will tell him that uh, your CD turned me on to music, so it'll be great. Um, well, I was lucky because my mom was always playing the classics, so... As, you know, when I was 10, I was listening to Frank Sinatra, and I was listening to, you know, all the old greats, and I, I still have an obsession with Frank Sinatra. Um, I remember that when I heard Elvis for the first time, no one explained to me that he wasn't living. So that was harder to take than Santa Claus, knowing, like, once I heard that. So definitely Elvis, love the Beatles, obviously, um, and Michael Jackson. Definitely, for sure. I mean, every kid danced in his room to that, and I still do, embarrassingly. But, yeah. And some of the newer ones. Um, definitely love One Republic. I love Maroon 5. I think the script is doing some amazing stuff. There's a great band out there. And Coldplay is just one of, I think, the, the best bands of my generation and just creating sounds. And then on the complete other side of the spectrum, I love hip-hop. And I think there's a lot to take from that and, and how they infuse culture into all the songs. So I think it's really cool. I think so. I think also in New York City, you're, you're, you're born and raised in a place where no one looks the same. And you walk two blocks one way and it's like a different world. So you kind of expect the unexpected. And when you hear music, no one tells you, oh, well, you live above this avenue or you live over here. You should only listen to this. It was, I was blind to whoever was singing it. And New York has an energy that just relates to hip hop. It's just that raw creative energy. So yeah, I loved it. Yeah, uh, Long Story Short is the name of my EP and the first single off of the EP. It's a four song EP available on iTunes as well as the video. And uh, the single Long Story Short came out of necessity. I was constantly having to explain myself to my friends and say, well, I may be in school, but I'm doing something else. I'm making music, I'm writing. And they would say, well, where are you interning? Or where, where do you want to get a job? And I would say, uh, long story short, I'm, I'm doing my own thing. I'm, I'm following my dream. So when I kept saying that, I thought, well, how can I make that uh, kind of my mission statement? And that's what essentially my EP is. It's a long story short. That's what an album is. That's what a song is. So I get to put these little moments of my life into these songs. And on the EP as well, there's a single uh, called Someone Tell Britney, which is not about Britney Spears. Um, it's about my first real girlfriend, and that was her name. And she broke my heart, and uh, that's when I started really being able to write from an honest place. And uh, then come to pass, I write Someone Tell Britney, and it's kind of the thank you letter for breaking my heart. Um, and hopefully sometime she's heard it and likes it. And, uh, and there's other great tracks on there. There's When It Rains, which is an upbeat song about the idea of when things go wrong, they go wrong, but when they go well, they go really well, and you got to kind of accept the extremes, if you will. And the other is I Don't Speak Silence, which, uh, again, came from a relationship experience where, you know, you have this girlfriend and you think everything's okay, but she doesn't let you know that maybe she's unhappy. And in the chorus, I sing, you know, I don't speak silence, I only make noise. And that's what I do. So if she doesn't tell me she's hurting or upset, I, I can't help you. So I have to leave. And, and I think it's really honest. I think it's, it's new, it's fresh, and I think it's hopefully a sound that everyone enjoys. I think nowadays with iTunes and, and the digital formats that we're in, it's, it's it kind of a different game. I mean, I love, I'm continuously writing and I love being able to get the music out to the fans as soon as it's done because I want them to hear it. I want to, you know, I want to see what they think. I want to see if they enjoy it. So we have the EP. We're probably going to release another EP spring and bundle that into an album for the summer. And only because I know nowadays that I want to make sure that 
that you really enjoy the music because you're you're spending money on it and and that's you know it's not easy to ask someone to to buy music nowadays when it's very easy to take it so i make it my job to make solid good songs that will fill a four song ep and you can be sure that each one of those songs is is solid and to the point and not just filler because i needed a 12 song album and you know nowadays you can pick and choose so definitely an album coming up we have uh, two new songs i just wrote last week one we're trying to find a uh, a very interesting collaborator to to come in and do some some guest vocals on and i think that would really surprise some people and that's in the works as well so continuously writing another ep bundle it into a big album and hope for the best